Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can track points in a video. So previous here on the channel, we have made videos about optical flow, optic tracking, and all those different kind of things. But Mids AI has just released a new AI model that can do tracking of optics, but also like just tracking of points from frame to frame in a video. So Mids AI has just released this new model called CodeTracker. We're going to take a look at it. We're going to go over the GitHub repository, and then we're going to see some results with a demo. We're going to pass some videos through it. We're going to create some segmentation masks. So we just want to like track specific objects around in the frame. I'm going to show you how we can do all that. And then in another video, we're going to see how we can use this in our own custom Python script. So we're now jump straight into the code tracker GitHub repository. So first of all, here again, this is from Facebook research, Meta AI. They have released this code tracker, which is actually like pretty nice. So a lot of tracking algorithms and also tracking models have come out recently, but this is definitely like one of the better ones. Let's just take a look here at the results to start with, just to get an overview over how good this act like is. So we can see this mountain biker. He's basically just driving around in this track. We're tr detecting these points. Um, on the body and then we're basically just tracking those over the number of images so we're basically just tracking it in the whole video sequence so this is what we're going to do i'm going to show you how we can set this up so we can use it in your own applications and projects but again actually how we can get these points is that we just create like a segmentation mask of the object so we can both combine this with optic segmentation optic detection and so on and basically just track individual points so this is a bit similar to optical flow which is a more like classical computer vision algorithm now we have these ai models neural networks deep learning models that can do all of these things for us so first of all here let's just scroll down we can see the installation instructions if you want to install it in your own local environment i also show that in a google collab notebook in just a second so just need to like install some uh, dependencies some libraries then we also need to set up the code tracker and its dependencies then we have these model ways that we need to go in and download so it's basically just to have these free pre-trained models and then we can go in and use those they have this call up table here that we're going to run in just a second we're going to set it up and, and basically just see some examples and then in another video we're going to extract it we're maybe going to combine it with a uh, yolov8 for segmentation so we're going to use yolov8 for segmentation and then basically just tracking those points from the segmentation mask so i'll actually promise you guys that i'm going to do it on a webcam so we're actually going to have a live webcam where we're going to track points around with this code tracker model so if you want to take your machine learning, AI, and computer vision skills to the next level, I also have my courses on the website. You can go check them out. We have everything from optic detection with deployment, optic tracking with Yolo V8. We also have transformers and segmentation courses. The most interesting one for me is definitely like this research paper implementation course where we learn how to actually like implement research paper architecture. So we're going to have the architecture on one side. We're going to have code on the other side. So we now jumped into this Google Colab notebook. First of all here, we need to make sure that our runtime is actually like set to the GPU because we need um, our hardware accelerator to be able to run this model. Again, we have an AI model. So that is why it's so important that we use the GPU. Here in Google Colab, you can use this T the T4 GPU for free. Now we can see that I'm connected to the environment. First of all here, again, we just need to cl clone this GitHub repository. And then we just need to like pip install all these things. So now we can see here that we have cloned the GitHub repository. We made some track points and we have also downloaded a model. So this is one of the models that we can use. So we went with the first one here. It's basically just like how many strides we want to use and also uh, winds. We can now import our uh, dependencies. So torch, code tracker, utils, visualizer. We want to have a visualizer. We also know we're going to read a video from the path. If you go over here to the left, we have our code tracker directory. And then we can actually see our checkpoint. So this will be our model that we're going to run it through. And we also have these files that we can go down and use. So we have our train.py, demo.py, and so on, which is basically just running these demos on uh, videos. We have our code tracker with our data set evaluation. If we go up into the assets, we can also see we have this example video. So this is the video that we're going to use throughout this notebook. Okay, so let's now read in that video here, read video from path. We're basically just going to specify the path. And then we're also going to convert our video here to PyTorch. So let's just run that. Then we have this function to act like show the video. So I'm just going to run this block of code. So this is the video that we're basically going to track the points around on. So first of all, we need to segment out the apple in the frames. And then we also just in extract individual points from that mask. And then we're going to track those points over time. So now we can actually like just go down and import our code tracker predictor and create an instance of it. So we can go in and do inference. So we're basically just creating a model with our checkpoint. So let's go ahead and do that. So if CUDA is available, if you're using a GPU, we're going to transfer the model and also the video to the GPU. We need to have our data on the same device as our model. Then we can basically just throw our video through our code tracker model and it will do everything for us. 
Now we're going to put it on the GPU because I'm connected to a T4. So now we can actually go in and basically just pass the video through our model and also specify the grid size. So here we can track the point sample on a regular grid of size 30 by 30 on the first frame. Then we're going to get our predictions for our tracks and also our predictions for our visibility. So we're going to use both of them because we're both going to, going to get like a pred prediction for our visibility, like how how vi visible are our points that we're tracking, but also the predictions for our tracks. So our track is basically just um, all the points throughout each individual image in our video. So those are the points that we actually just want to track. So that will basically be corresponding to the lines that you can see after each point in the demo videos. Okay, so now it's done running. We can go down and visualize our results. So we just have this visualizer, which is basically just imported from the code tracker repo. We're going to call the visualize here. We're going to visualize the video and also the predicted track. So that will be all the lines behind our videos and also our visibility. And our file name here will be teaser. So now we should be able to go in here and extract the video folder. So now we can see we have this videos folder and we should have a video called uh, teaser underscore predict uh, dot track. And we can also just call this show video so we can show it directly in Google Colab. You can also download it directly. So here we see the points that we're detecting on this grid. And then we're tracking these points when our camera is actually like moving from frame to frame. So this is already pretty cool. Let's go in and see the track visualizations after that. We can also go in and track manually selected points. So you can both do, like do optic detection and then take specific points in your bounding box. That could be the center of your bounding box that you want to track. You can also just choose like a specific point with your mouse. Okay, I press on this image here. And then it's basically just going to track that exact point in your video. So first of all, here we just define these. So that could be like, for example, the bounding boxes, but these are just some arbitrary points. So these will, these will be our queries. Again, we need to put our queries on the same device as our model. And here we can, can then go down and actually like create a list of the frame numbers corresponding to each point. Basically just set everything up. Let's just run it. So here we can see the points that we want to track in the individual frames. So at frame zero, it is supposed to like be here. Then we're going to track this point. In frame 10, we are here in the image. So this is basically just the individual points that we want to manually track in our video sequence. So we pass these points as an input to the model and then we're actually like able to track them. We just specify our queries and the videos where before we specified our grid. After we've gotten the results, we're going to call the visualizer. It is the exact same thing as before. And now we're just going to create another video called queries predict track. And we're going to show it directly in Google Colab. Here we can see the point that we're starting, the second point, and also the third and the fourth point. We can see these tracks here. So, so, so all these lines here behind each point is basically like the track predictions that we get and also a visibility score. So our visibility will be the points and then we have the tracks after that. So this is basically the path that our point has taken throughout all the images in our video. This can be used for a lot of different kind of applications. Like it can be used for um, optical flow, tracking motion in your image, tracking different objects. It can also be used for like estimating the, the pose of your camera and so on. So this is really awesome. We can also do points on a regular grid. Again, this is kind of like the same as before. Now we basically just specify the grid size and also a grid query frame. So let's just run that and see the example. So before we just initialized our grid to start with, now we can actually go in and specify where and when we want to initialize our grid here. And that will be at the 20th frame, as we can also see here. That will be around like one and a half, uh, two seconds. There we go. And then we can see that we're tracking these, um, these points here around very nicely in the frame. So now we're going to track forward and also backward from frame number X. So that is just another example. Again, I'm just going to run through it. Only difference here is that we can actually like just pass this parameter backward tracking equal to true. The rest is the same. And then we're going to see the results. After that, we're going to see how we can do the regular grid, but also use a segmentation mask. So we don't want to like have the whole grid divided over our image. We just want to segment out a specific object in our scene. And then we're going to apply the grid on top of that object. And then we can track that over the number of frames. So here we can see the results. So this is basically just tracking back and forth. So the first of all, it's tracking, it's tracking like the, all the points one way and then also the other way again. So it's basically running the, the, the video through like forward and then backward. And that is what we're specifying here, backward tracking. So first of all, forward tracking, backward tracking. And that is why our points are initialized a bit different here compared to the other examples, because here we actually like initialize them where on the Apple they are actually like are instead of just having this like um, even distributed um, grid. Let's go ahead and do the regular, regular grid plus the segmentation mask. 
Again, we can go in and use the ULV8 model for doing optic seg segmentation. We can even like try to go in and have multiple optics instead of just a single optic that might actually like, be a cool case to test out if it's capable of tracking multiple optics also in different areas of the image. So let's just run this here. We're going to get our segmentation mask. We're just going to open that. So that will just be like an image that is already processed. So again, if you want to use this in your own application, you will have to act like apply segmentation uh, model on top of that, get your output mask or your segmentation mask, and then use that to apply the grid on top of. And that is exactly what I just told you that we're going to do with the YOLOV8 model. Let's plot the image here with our segmentation mask. It should basically just segment out the apple. There you go. And now we can do the exact same thing. So again, we can specify the grid size, but now we can also specify a segmentation mask. Here we're just throwing in the mask, as we can see here. Create the visualizer, create the video, and then we're just going to show the video at the end. Here we can see that we have these points here segmented on the apple. We lose some of the points here, but that is okay. And we can also see that like, they are actually like, initialized outside the apple here. So that kind of makes sense. It just shows like how good this optic tracker acts like is. Also compared to like the segmentation mask here. So again, we can see some of the points here around in the boundaries of the segmentation mask is not really perfect. So that is why it acts like has some points outside of the boundaries of the apple. But again, we can see all the other points here detected to start with. They are tracked very nicely. So thank you for asking what this video here. It has been really cool showing you guys all the capabilities of this model and also different variations, what we can use it for. In the upcoming videos, we're definitely going to create some really cool applications and projects and test out some different variations of this. Definitely hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video so you get notification when I upload those videos. This video will more just to show you guys like all the examples and the possibilities with this model. I hope to see you in one of the future videos, guys. Bye for now.